Hey guys, today we're going to go over OpenAI's chat completion um, feature called function calling. And what it lets you do is provide a question or query to OpenAI's chat completion API. And given that, along with context of your different functions that your program accepts, it will choose which function to call, if any, and then also provide you with the correct parameters to pass into that function based on the descriptions of the arguments that you pass in. Um, so we can look into this a little bit. I'll link this in the description as well. To, they have a good guide here on how it works and a good example using um, chat completion feature calling to choose which weather function to run. So we'll go through something similar. There's also the API docs if you want something more technical for the chat completion API. Um, but to get started, we'll go into here. I created a new project. You could just um, name it anything. And for this, you could either use poetry, pip, um, or um, pip, like a tomo file, or you could just use a requirements.txt to keep it simple. Um, so I'll create a requirements.txt file, and we'll require OpenAI, and then let's also require OpenAI function calling. This is actually a, a package I created, which basically wraps a lot of the complexity of converting your functions to JSON schema and you can represent them as classes and, and just call a function, which will convert to the JSON schema for you. It makes it a little bit easier. So let's create a file, let's we'll call it main.py. We can import OpenAI and then import OpenAI function calling. Actually, we'll say from this, let's import function and parameter. Cool. So let's create two example functions so I'll create a function get today's weather. And this could accept two parameters. Let's say the location should be a string. And then uh, what else do we want? Um, we could do units. I think that's what uh, the OpenAI example did. So unit string, and this will return, let's say a string with the response. So as an example, we're not gonna have to connect to a weather API, but let's just return um, I'll increase the font a little bit, make it easier to see. <clears throat> I'll just return a string saying today's weather. And the location is, let's say 75 degrees. And then the unit. So hopefully the unit is going to be Fahrenheit because otherwise that would be pretty hot. And then we'll create duplicate this and let's just say, <clears throat> get tomorrow's weather. And it'll have the same parameters defined here. And we'll just change this to tomorrow's weather in will be. And then I guess here you would have all your logic. So this is where the logic for getting the weather data would be. And it would be the same thing for the first function. So to keep it simple, we're just going to return a string. Normally you would call it connect to an API here, get the weather for today based on location and the units, and then you would return a string with the actual degrees here. But for this example, we'll just return a string, keep it simple. And then using the function from OpenAI Open function calling, let's define our function in terms of a JSON schema. Or in our case, we can give a simple and just define it as an object. So let's say get today's weather function equals a function. And the name, we'll just copy the name of the function. And then a description, you could say given a location and units return the weather for today. And then the parameters, we could, this return requires a list. So we'll say parameter and the parameter, the first one is location and the type is a string. I think it's actually spell out string and um, this is 
would be nice to actually have an enumeration for this as opposed to having to type that out. So something we could add to this package eventually, which would be nice. Um, and then the third argument is the description. So say the location of where to get the weather data for. And then it, you could also pass in the enum, which is um, a list of allowed values, which you'll see when we do the next art, um, parameter here. So I'll duplicate this and we'll change this to unit. And that's also gonna be a string. And this will be the temperature units to the temperature units. Keep it simple. All right, so I'll format that, make it look a little nicer. And then we'll set that as an enum. So I'm just gonna copy that from where I have it defined already. Um, let's see. So I have a little snippet I'll copy. So for the enum, we'll specify, um, sorry, that has to be in the parameter. So in the parameter unit, it's a string and the allowed values are Celsius or Fahrenheit. So that will tell ChatGPT what to respond with, with the two options to limit it, as opposed to responding with like capital C Celsius or capital C, the abbreviation. Um, so that's, that's one of our functions. Let's copy this and we'll do it for tomorrow's weather. So we just replace this, return the weather for tomorrow. And then everything else should stay the same. So it should be good there. So I'll minimize these, make it a little cleaner. And then what we wanna do next is actually convert these to dicks. So you can see what that looks like. So I'll say dict equals this, that to dict. All right, so we have this dict here and we can print it out. I could type today's weather function dict. And before we can actually run this, we have to make sure we have these packages in the requirements set text installed locally. So what I usually do is create a virtual environment so that when you install packages, it's not polluting the global um, namespace of Python packages. And it will only install for this project and they'll be kind of isolated. So to do that, you could do Python hyphen M VNV. I'll make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. And then we can call the virtual environment ENV. And it'll create a folder here, env, and that's where we'll, that's where we will install these packages. So we can activate the virtual environment by running source env bin activate, and then you can see here the env is activated. Um, so now if we do pip install hyphen r requirements.txt to install the packages from the requirements.txt file, they'll be installed in our virtual environment. So now if we do uh, just to verify, if we do pip list, we'll see that OpenAI, OpenAI function calling, they're both installed. Okay, so now let's try running this and see what happens. So we run python main.py, take a look at the JSON, and I'll copy this and I'll put it in a new tab, and then format this as JSON so it's easier to see. So we see the function name defined here with the description, and then the parameters is a type object, and then properties. Um, each property or each um, parameter we have defined is a key with its its uh, meta information here. So the type and the description. And then for unit, we have the enum as expected with the options of Celsius or Fahrenheit. So we can close this out and let's do the same thing for tomorrow's weather. And then we don't have to print this anymore. It's just an example. So we have that. So now let's actually um, send this message to OpenAI and see what it, with a query and see what it, re it responds with. So to do this, I'm going to copy over a message, which is basically just our query to ChatGPT, as if you're talking to it on the web interface. So let's say what will the weather be in Boston, Massachusetts tomorrow in Celsius. And this is the role of a user. So in your case, you can make this either dynamic with like a CLI or something and pass this into um, OpenAI API. In this case, we're just going to hard code this query. And then from there, we'll call um, the OpenAI chat completion API. So I'll copy that over to avoid some long typing. And then 
I will copy today's weather. Okay. So as a, the comment says here, the function call auto is the default. Um, so you could say, I think none is another option if you don't want to, to respond with the function call. But in this case, we want it to respond to the function call. So we'll leave that as is. Make it a little smaller. All right, so what this is going to do is going to pass our messages here into the API with this model, GPT 3.5 Turbo, and the functions that we defined, the dicks of them, which are in a JSON schema format, which is what it expects. And then we could print the response and see what it looks like. So we're going Python main again. All right, and I will copy this into a new tab again, so it's easier to see. And we can see the ID, the object contract completion created, the model, and the choices, which are its responses, and you could choose from all of them. You, there should always be at least one, so you could just always choose the first one. And you could see that it is a function call. So if we grab the message, and then we could see if there's a function call parameter, because sometimes it might not respond with that. If, especially if you have auto, because if it's on auto and it doesn't see that one of the functions matches the query, it could respond without a function call response here. Um, so we check to see if this exists, and if it does, we can grab the name of the function and get the arguments and then pass those into the actual function and get the weather response and return to the user. So something I should have mentioned before we did this actually is you want to grab your um, OpenAI API key and set that in your environment. Um, so you could do that in multiple ways. You could either do open API AI, uh, sorry, open AI API key equals paste your key here and then run Python main. Or you could just do export this equal to that. And that'll set it for all commands you run after in this terminal session. Um, so I already have mine set. I have it in my um, bash RC file, so it's always automatically set, so don't have to worry about it. Um, but in this case, you could just do this, export it, and get, set your key here. And what this is, is you can get this from the OpenAI um, API. Um, if you go to your account settings, you can get an API key. And you just want to paste that here, and that will let you connect to the API. And there's also another way to do it. I think if you type OpenAI dot, I think it's key, API key, you could set it here as well. Um, but I usually, I prefer to do it with an environmental variable. So that's something you'll need before you can actually get a response here. All right, so I'll copy some of this code over so we don't have to go through it all. I'll, I'll explain it as we go. And this is looking like an error just because the types from OpenAI are a little weird. Um, but the response message should be correct. So let's print this out and just make sure. So what this is doing is grabbing the choices array here. And then from that array, it's going to get the first element because there could be multiple choices, but we only really care about the first one. And then let's grab the message, which will be choices, the first item, and then the message object here. And let's print that out. All right, so we get the response with the role assistant. So ChatGPT is responding. We see that there is a function call. And for our query, what will the weather be like in Boston tomorrow in Celsius? It says to call get tomorrow's weather with the location set as Boston, Massachusetts, and the unit as Celsius, which is correct. All right, so then we can write some more logic, which I will copy over again, because it's saved me from typing. Uh, I'll import some of these. You don't have to worry about the types if you don't want to. And I'm just gonna update this to where it should be. Um, so we could add a JSON import. So we could do import JSON up here, and that will let us parse JSON. And then um, we'll check to see if in the response message here, if the function call key exists. Um, so we could, we could actually simplify this. Um, so if the function call is in response message, then we'll call the function. So our available functions, we have a lookup table here as a dict, and we have the key, so the function name to the actual function itself, which is a callable. So given the response message, the function call name, we can pull the actual function off of it. So we get the function name from the function call object. 
we get the arguments and we parse them as JSON because you see here it's a escaped JSON string. And then we get the function to call from the available functions object, passing in the function name. So in this case, the available functions has these two functions and opening I responded with get tomorrow's weather. So it's going to pass in the key get tomorrow's weather and it will respond, it will get the value get tomorrow's weather here, the callable, the actual function itself. And then from there, we can call the function with the arguments that we received. So we'll call it with function to call. I'll get rid of this type and then pass in the location and the unit. And then we'll print, just print it and say, we called the function with, and the function gave the response to this. So I hope that all makes sense. If it doesn't, feel free to leave a comment and I will get back to you. But let's run this and see what happens. Okay, cool. So we said, um, we got the response, call tomorrow's weather with response. Tomorrow's weather in Boston will be 75 degrees Celsius, which is hot. Um, so this is basically all of it. You could, there's a lot of use cases for this. I, I was thinking more so like home automation, like turn on the light and you have a function, turn on light. And then you could say like, um, I don't know, turn on AC and that could be a separate function or what is the weather today? And it will call function, get you the weather and speak it back to you. Um, so it's kind of like a home assistant. If you could do something like that, there's a lot of other use cases for automation. If you want to like format data and do certain things. Um, so yeah, that's basically the, uh, th th those are all the basics of how to use the function calling API. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and, uh, yeah, thank you.